Well, we also like to introduce some of the leaders of the Muslim organizations who are here with us. On my immediate right, we have Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmad, who is the convener of this gathering here. We all know he is the chief imam, Nigerian University of the Southern Society of Nigeria. And sitting next to my immediate left is our indefatigable professor. It's a household name that doesn't need much of introduction. And that is Professor Isihak Akintola, the director of MURIC. You are most welcome, sir. Sitting next to the convener is Asheik Tajidini Adebayo, Tajidini, the Chief Missioner and Chief Imam of Ar Rahmat Islamia Society of Nigeria. And sitting next to him is also one of our own, Asheik Abdurrahman Sulaiman Adamba, the Chief Missioner of Fazi uh, Ukori. And also sitting next to our own professor is the Secretary of CIO, Engineer Lukman. Engineer Lukman Yusuf. I'm yours sincerely, Abdullah Shuai, coordinator of the Conference of Islamic Organizations. And we also have so many other organizations here that time might not permit me to mention their name one after the other. It's basically to also lend our voice as a responsive and responsible coalition of Muslims organizations in Nigeria, Lagos State in particular. We cannot allow a criminal act to just go like that without letting our people be aware, conscientizing their minds towards their civic responsibility, and also you know, holding the government accountable for whatever they are at. And that is the purpose of why we are here. We only have one issue to raise and to discuss. The issue here has to do with the 9.3 million US dollar that some people try to smuggle out with the conniver of the federal government to address this issue and equally entertain questions from the gentlemen of the press and then also take some contribution from some of our leaders who are here and then after that we call it a day. So I'm saying this just to draw the attention of the gentlemen of the press that the single issue that brought us here is this. So therefore I'd like to invite the convener, Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmad, to address to address this issue as the way we have seen it. Bismillah. Um, brothers and sisters, gentlemen of the press, I welcome you to this very auspicious occasion. Um, this is like has been established, this is our reaction to a very, very important uh, issue of national security, and that's um, the $9.3 million cash for arms deal. Um, and this is the address. The Conference of Islamic Organizations, CIO, a coalition of several Muslim organizations, central mosques, Muslim professional bodies, and faith-based organizations, among others, note with a heavy heart that the ungodly and sinister relationship between the federal government of Nigeria and the Christian Association of Nigeria president, um, that's Khan president, Pastor Ayo, Joseph Urisa Jaffo, with their latest attempted scandalous money laundering and illegal arms procurement in South Africa. It is no longer news that two Nigerians and an Israeli, Mr. Eyal Mesika, attempted to smuggle 9.3 million US dollars, equivalent to 1.514 502 billion naira into South Africa with the intent to procure ammunition purportedly for intelligence services to combat insurgency in parts of northeastern Nigeria. Certain facts have since emerged and have been established as per the actors involved 
in the illegal arms deal and money laundering crime, albeit the president of Christian Association of Nigeria, Pastor Ayo Joseph Risajafo, owner of the Bombardier Challenger 600 jet, President Goodluck Jonathan Government, and Mr. Eyal Masika, a representative of the Israeli government. The Conference of Islamic Organization, CIO, unequivocally reject the position conversed by the General Secretary of Khan, Reverend Dr. Musa Asaki, to exonerate the President of Khan, Pastor Ayo Risa Jaffo, from the smuggled cash and illegal arms deal in their paid advertoria on page 12 of the Nation newspaper on Sunday, 21st September 2014. It is unfortunate that Khan is not addressing the issue at stake, i.e. money laundering, violation of cashless policy, and illegal arms procurement with the jet of its president, Pastor Ayo Orisa Jaffo, but rather dissipating its energy and resources on personalizing the matter by joining issues with a former minister of the Federal Capital Territory. In the same vein, we find the position and reaction of the federal government to the cash arms deal terribly appalling. It is a very bad attempt at sweeping a gravely criminal act under the carpet. It is not a mere procedural error. It is a well-coordinated attempt at covertly undermining national security. Such an argument on the part of government and its cohort is not only lame, laughable and ludicrous, but provocative, vexatious, and an insult on the collective intelligence of Nigerians. If indeed the money was meant for a legitimate procurement of arms for the Nigerian security agencies, the following pertinent questions need convincing and logical answers. Number one, are there no official jets in government fleet that could be used to transact such an important deal? Number two, why has the government of President Goodluck Jonathan chosen to conduct its arms procurement outside the normal official channels, but rather through the private jet of the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria? Number three, is the covert arms bind with the private jet of a Christian leader and President of Christian Association of Nigeria in particular not suspicious, and will it not further heat up the polity and worsen the problem of mutual suspicion within the religious community in Nigeria? Number four, otherwise, why would such a huge cash, a huge sum of money, be moved by the federal government in a private jet by private persons and no single official? from the Office of the National Security Advisor, or Department of State Security Services, or the military is involved. Number five, why did the federal government fail to officially notify the South African government of the cash for arms deal until it was apprehended by the latter's government agency? Number six, is the movement of such huge amount of cash not a negation of the cashless policy of the federal government. Number seven, even truth and honesty. The cash for arms deal is legitimate. Why did the federal government fail to follow the protocol of notifying officials of Nigerian embassy in South Africa so that all necessary arrangements would have been made to declare and clear the cash on arrival in South Africa? If truly, the transaction is legitimate. Why was the National Conventional Arms Control Committee, NCAACC, in South Africa, a body vested with the power to approve the import and export of any weapons as well as issue permits for such transaction, not aware of any applications from the federal government of Nigeria? Number nine, if the federal government is not being economical of the truth, why transact, transacting such a deal with Taiwan and ESD, both unregistered firms with the NCACC in South Africa? 
Or is the federal government claiming ignorance that both firms are not authorized to enter into any agreement regarding rental, sale of military equipment? Number 10, was it a mere coincidence that it was the private jet of the president of Cannes, a kinsman of President Goodluck Jonathan, who has consistently advocated the federal government has not been doing much to tackle the insurgency in northern parts of the country, particularly in the Muslim-dominated regions of Nigeria, the one that was used by the contractors of arms procurements. Number 11. Or has the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria found laws guiding the usage of non-scheduled commercial operators being amended to allow private jet owners, such as the one belonging to Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo, president of Khan, use their planes for commercial purposes and particularly for moving huge sums of money and buying arms illegally against this back, back, background. CIO take very serious exception to the way the federal government tries to cover up this illegal transaction. Our fears are being confirmed that Muslims are no longer safe in Nigeria with the ongoing federal government and President Goodluck Jonathan, Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo, can leadership. We are not surprised that Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo has hijacked Khan for his selfish interest and succeeded two years ago in frustrating the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria to suspend its participation at Cannes meetings at the national level over, according to them, um, some recent attitudes, utterances, and actions of the national leadership of Cannes. CIO therefore believes that the illegal arms procurement is not unconnected with the political ambition of President Goodluck Jonathan, and ably assisted by his kinsman and close friend, the President of Khan, whom the Catholic bishops lamented has politicized Khan and is using it to divide Nigerians on ethno-religious line. As, and I quote, Khan is being dragged into partisan politics, thereby compromising the ability to play its true role as conscience of the nation and the voice of the voiceless. We are also wondering if the scandalous arms procurement deal associated with the private jet of the president of Khan, Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo, and large sum of cash was not part of the preparation to fully arm and fortify the Niger Delta militants, political thugs, and snipers, which former President Ulisse Gwambasanjo alleged in his 18-page letter before it is too late, written to President Gulag Jonathan of, and I quote, training snipers and other armed personnel secretly and clandestinely acquiring weapons to march for political purposes. More so that the likes of Elder Edward Edwin Clark and his boys have sworn that if President Goodluck Jonathan did not win the 2015 presidential election, there will be nothing like Nigeria again. In order to allay the fears of Nigerians and assure Muslims that there is no conspiracy whatsoever, the National Assembly must get to the root of this scandal, which has ridiculed the image of Nigeria in, in the world. We deserve to know why a calculated and deliberate attempt was made to smuggle such a large sum of money out of the country into South Africa. The National Assembly must also identify the two Nigerians involved and their ethno-religious background, verify and confirm where the money was sourced from. Is it from the Central Bank of Nigeria or where? Was it appropriated by the National Assembly or otherwise? Who authorized the transaction? And which arm of the security agency is the equipment meant for? Until the outcome of the investigation by the National Assembly is made public, CIO rejects the flimsy argument 
given by the federal government, as well as the lame cover up by Khan in his paid advertoria carried on page 12 of the Nation newspaper on Sunday, 21st December 2014. We urge all Muslims, in spite of these provocation, to remain calm, peaceful, and law-abiding until we get to the root of the scandalous transaction in earnest, and until all the plots against the people of this country are uncovered. We believe in peaceful coexistence. We believe that Muslims and Christians in this country are, in this country are not enemies. We are not at war. We strongly believe that certain politicians in, gar in the garb of religion are hiding under religion and exploiting religious sentiment to cause disaffection, undermine the security and sovereignty of this country, and the earlier they are brought to book, the better for us. In other claims, people who are accused of this crime as huge as this should have been under investigation by now. All these characters are still working the streets, and it is very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate indeed. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and long live the Muslim community.